All right, let's look at question number 19. How can you bulk import customer users for community in Salesforce? To import community users, you need three entities. The account record with which the user's contact is associated, the contact record for the user, and the profile of the user. So you need to store the account ID and contact ID to map to the users in the spreadsheet you want to import. Now let's look at the attributes that would be needed to import users. So these attributes are user field, first name, last name, alias, is active, email, username, role ID, profile ID, contact ID, currency ISO code, locale, language, time zone, email encoding key, locale SID key, language locale key, and time zone SID key. So once the import is successfully done with all these attributes, you need to send out the welcome emails to your new community users. Now to do that, you can simply add your profile to the member section in the community workspace, which is under administration, and check the send welcome email. Question number 20. Does with sharing respect field level security? With sharing and without sharing keywords impact field level security or not, right? So let's create a new Apex class just to testify that. So I'll create an Apex class and I'll call it class with sharing context. All right. And here, let's first of all use the with sharing keyword. I'll just start by creating a method. So I've named my method check field visibility and let's do something. Let's query out a record. We'll query a contact record and we'll be specifically looking at the phone field. So let me just So let's find out a contact record for which we can do some testing around this sharing context. I'll just save this class. Alright, let's go to the org. Let's go to the contact record. So I'll just open a random record, contact1. I'll take the record ID from this contact. And this is the record we'll be looking at. Alright. And we want to check whether field level security works or not. So let's look at a field. Let's say there are some phone fields, right? Let's, let's look at other phone, right? So let me do something. Let me just add a value to this field and save it. So the other phone value has been saved. And now let's try to query this. Let's save this. I'll add a debug statement just to double check. Right now, let's try to execute this. I'll just comment out the other commands. So, I'm logged in as a system administrator right now. Okay, let's click on open log and let's click on execute. So, if I go to the debug only section. I'll see that the other, other phone value is being displayed fine, right? Now let's do something. Let's remove the field level access from the system administrator for other phone. I'll just click on edit, edit object. Let's remove the visibility for this field. So I'll go to object manager, fields and relationships, other phone. Set field level security and for system administrator, I'll just remove the visible check, which means it should not be visible to the system admin anymore. Let's click on save. So now the visibility is hidden. Now let's do something. Let's refresh our record. And if I go to the details section, I'm not able to see the other phone field now right that means it's been hidden for the system administrator but let's do something let's execute this code snippet again 
and let's see if we can access it here. So if I go for the debug only, you see I'm still being still able to see the other phone. Now if I just change this with sharing to without sharing and save this. And execute the same statement. Let's see what the log returns this time. So I'm still being able to see the other phone, right? Which means sharing rules have nothing to do with the, sorry, I mean with sharing and without sharing keywords have nothing to do with the field level security. So since it's run, since it's a more added as a without sharing or a with sharing keyword does not mean that the field level security will also be taken into concern. All right, now let's do something. If we want to add any kind of securities around the field level security, we can modify our circle by saying with security enforced. So this is the keyword you'll probably want to use if you want to enforce field level security. Let's save this query and let's see if it saves fine. Yeah, it's saving fine now. Now let's do something. Now let's execute our code snippet. So it's saying insufficient permissions, secure query included inaccessible field, right? That means it's not allowing you to access the other phone uh, field basically. Right? If I just remove the other phone from here and click on save. If I execute this, this will execute fine. Right? Because I'm not using any kind of fields which do not bypass or surpass the field level security. If instead of, you know, you know other phone, phone, if I just add some other fields which for which the admin has access. Let's try to save this and let's try to execute this. So even this will execute fine because the field level access is present for the system administrator. But as soon as I add something which does not have, which for which the field level security is not defined, we get an error on execution. So you can handle your field level security using this keyword with space security enforced. But the bottom line is even if you add with sharing or without sharing that does not mean that the FLS will automatically be calculated. Alright, cool. Let's look into the next question. Question number 21. Which interface do you need to use if you want to embed lightning components to a visual flow? The interface you are looking for is the lightning colon available for flow screens interface. If you want to use Aura components inside a flow, this interface makes the component available to be used in flows. Question number 22. Write a circle for all accounts which do not have any associated opportunities. Alright, so this question is a pretty straightforward one. We want to only query accounts which do not have any associated opportunities. So for example, if account 1 is associated to two opportunities, account 2 is associated with none, account 3 is associated with one opportunity and account 4 is associated with none, this query should only return account 2 and account 4. This is what we are looking at, right? So let's go to our query editor. I don't think we'll have to write any kind of code for this. Let's simply query out some account records. So we want to query account, which means our select query will be on the account object, right? So let's just pick ID comma name from account. Now the ask is, these accounts should not be associated to any opportunity. Now on opportunity, we have an account ID field, right? So what we can do here is we can just simply write where ID not in and we can use another query here saying select account ID from opportunity. This is something can be done, that can be done using the not, not, in, not in clause. All right. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to fetch all the accounts where the account ID is not part of any opportunity, right? This is our use case and this should suffice. So let's click on execute and this is giving me five records, right? Let's do something. Let's try to play around with the data a bit. So I'll just look into an account sample account for entitlements. Let's go to accounts or let's just modify SF training. Let's associate an opportunity with this particular account. Okay. So under the related section, let me just create a new opportunity. I think I can save it now. So now SF training account has a record of opportunity associated to it, right? Now let's do something. Let's 
rerun this query. Let's refresh the grid. So you see, SF training is not part of this query, which means our query is working just fine. Right? So the very easy way to you know not include accounts or not include records which are part of some other object is using the not in clause, which is placed right after the where clause. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 23. How do you share record with only one manager in a role where there are multiple managers assigned? So to provide specific access to selected users, if it is a metadata based permission, we can create a permission set and assign it to the user. Or if it is a record sharing, we can define criteria based sharing rules and share records with the specific user. If we can also write code, we can explicitly share the record acts by creating a share record for the user with the record. These are some of the possible ways with which we can either share metadata driven permissions or share records to specific users. Question number 24. How do you get rid of or avoid mixed DML exception? Okay, so we need to avoid or get rid of mixed DML exceptions, right? So what are mixed DML exceptions? These come in when you try to do DML statements on a setup object as well as a non-setup object in a single transaction. When I say single transaction, I mean a single Apex transaction. And when I say setup and non-setup objects, setup objects are some of the standard Salesforce objects like user, uh, profile, permission set, whereas non-setup objects are some standard objects as well as all the custom objects. So if we do a collective DML of both of these type of objects, Salesforce gives a mixed DML exception error. All right. And this is a frequently asked question in the interviews. And let's look at what this issue is actually. All right. So let me do something. I'll just create a new Apex class for this and I'll call it mixed DML exception controller or let's say mixed DML operation controller. Let me just close all the other tabs. I'll just let this save. Yeah, create a new Apex class. Next DML operation controller. Let's click on OK. So I'll just create a method first and I'll name it try mixed DML. So I'll try to reproduce this issue. So what do we need to do? We need to do DML operations with a setup and non setup object. Right. So for our example, we'll take user and account. All right. So let's create a user first. So I'll just create a user. Right, so I have created a user and I've just added the insert command and I've added all the required values, alias, email, username, uh, locale, SID keys, language, time zone, last name and email related keys, right? So insert user has been done. Now let's insert an account record, all right? So let's create a new account here and let's try to insert this. Right, let's try to save this. So if you see that as if, if we try to call this method, what this method is trying to do is it's trying to insert a user as well as an account record in the same transaction, right? Let's try to, you know, do this. Good. So you see, okay, I'm getting some insufficient permissions error. Okay, because I did not uncheck. Let me remove this. Let's click on execute. So you see, 
I'm getting an insert failed error first exception mix DML operation on setup object is not permitted after you have updated a non setup object right account and user so we are not allowed to do this in terms of Salesforce practices right so we have to figure out a way to segregate these two DML statements even though they are in the same transaction right now so one way to go about it is using the future method now what future method does is it, it it's just a simple annotation but it takes your code into asynchronous apex so only something that's available on your normal method will be taken as part of the transaction for the current synchronous transaction and whatever will be taken into the future method will run asynchronously which means these will be treated as two separate transactions and won't uh, uh, coincide with each other giving that mixed ml exception right and you also get a new set of governor limits for asynchronous apex which is again uh, a, a handy thing to have in case you are doing some uh, bulk transactions and also whenever the resources from salesforce would be available your future method will be run asynchronously and executed right so whenever you have a scenario when you have to you know tackle mixed dml scenarios wherein you have to um, update or you know do some dml's around setup and non setup whatever dml that is whatever dml you have that can run independently or is not required for the synchronous transaction per se but can be run in background can be moved to the future code right future method so let's try to attempt that now so i'll just create a new method i'll call it public static void call future method alright and I'll just create the account here alright I'll just pass the name so I'll just say account ACC rec is equal to new account name is equal to whatever account name is provided to the query to the method right ACC name and I'll just add a insert ACC rec alright let's save this and I'll just call this method from here okay I think this colon should not be here let's click on save and let's call this method from my first method let's save this all right so now we have saved it let's try to execute this now let's see what happens so you see I'm still getting the error which means I've still done some mistake and that mistake is very simple to identify I just wrote the method name as call future method but that does not do it you have to write an annotation which would be the keyword future all right now this makes this method a future method and will run this code asynchronously now that we have written the annotation let's try to re-execute it and see how things work so you see this time it's executed fine and if I have to go to accounts and see if a record got created so you see test mix DML account is created and also let's check if a user has also been created all right so let's do something let's go to users so you see test SF trainer user is created with the role CEO exactly how we set set it up right which means now your mixed DML exception has been avoided and you have gotten rid of the exception how by using the future method all right 